last class I discussed about martensitic transformation. I started actually discussing about martensitic transformation in the steels and in this class I am going to discuss in detail about martensitic transformations. As you know I told you at the beginning that austenitic phase can undergo three different transformations depending on the way you cool a steel sample. The first one we discuss is about, about the pyrolytic transformations in which austenite get transformed into pyrolite because of slow cooling below the A1 temperature. Second one which we are discussing is now is the martensitic transformation in which the steel sample from the austenitic stage is quenched in water and thereby leading to the formation of hard brittle martensitic phase. And normally martensite in steel is hard brittle. So the way martensitic transformation happens is that the austenitic phase which is FCC phase centered cubic solid solution of carbon in iron undergoes a shear induced diffusionless transformation in which the atoms get shifted by the application of shear force. And that is what I discussed again I am going to show you for your information in the slides. So martensitic transformation is basically a diffusionless transformation in which the FCC austenitic phase FCC austenitic phase get transformed into martensite which is which has a structure of BCT. Remember austenite we term as a gamma this martensite we term as alpha prime and in pyrolite you have alpha iron or alpha plus cementite okay the cementite is Fe3C. So martensite is a single phase uh, uh, structure with a body center tetragonal structure. Normally the body center tetragonal structure is defined by uh, based on the cube uh, lattice in which both the lattice parameter A and B are same C is distinctly different and the tetragonality is defined by C by A ratio and here C by A ratio is very small it depends on the carbon percentage but it, it can be very small. For low carbon concentration still it is basically BCC not a person tetragonal because C by A ratio is close to 1. So this is uh, the transformation which we are going to discuss in detail now but let me first show you some slides and pictures so that you get enthusiastic on the learning of martensites. Martensites normally comes as two morphologies I told you one is lath other one is plate. So lath and plate and uh, it happens that in some cases you get mixed of these two. In this picture which is optical micrograph taken nicely from the uh, Professor S. P. Gupta's book. You can see clearly see the plates of martensites very nicely these are the plates of martensites okay and the white areas what you see is basically written austenite okay which we will discuss later they are written austenite. Remember this is a shear induced uh, transformation so therefore it involves straining of the matrix and the strain means extra energy and because of that austenite is retained in the microstructure. We will discuss in detail later part but as you see here martensites comes a distinct morphology it is not same as pyrolite, austenite or any other things in the steel. So if you look at a microstructure of martensite under optical microscope you can distinctly see is clear and discern that morphology very very nicely. So this is what it looks like now if you look at you uh, know uh, much higher magnification as I told you martensite comes into two morphologies one is lath one is plate so these are the laths you can see the uh, you can see that they are like a leaves of the tree different uh, leaves and uh, these are actually plates on the right side you can see even the plates within the plates you can see even some you know dislocations or defect structure built in okay. So uh, and most importantly if you look at under op an electron microscope even these plates will look like a twin morphology I do not know have you ever seen twins in copper grains normally if this is a copper grain twin runs parallel to the uh, grain from one grain boundary to other grain boundary like a plate. So these are all the twins you see here twins so inside each of this martensitic plates you can see twins very clearly and this twin is basically because of the retaining the habit plane in the in the in the in the martensite transformations uh, to in order to retain the habit plane undistorted we need to have uh, a twin or sleep uh, kind of deformation inside the plates and that is what is visible in this microstructure 
well the way things happens is uh, the transformation happens is uh, was first time this uh, explained by E C brain a B I N brain not brain E C brain long back actually and this uh, is known also known as uh, this brain distortion model I discussed in the class I am going to show you in, in the board last class and I am going to show you on the lecture slide now. If you consider 2 FCC unit cell 2 FCC uh, uh, means 2 gamma iron okay. as you see a 2 FCC unit cell here and uh, side by side. Now uh, you know this FCC unit cell has a lattice parameter of A0. So this uh, can be actually you can generate the BCT unit cell from these two FCC unit cell like this. This is the one I am drawing by using a red color. You can see here this is the this is what is the uh, F F BCT unit cell here. There are atoms at the each corner of the unit cell and there are atoms at the center. Okay. So these white atoms the white I mean to say the things which has inside is white is iron while on the other hand these atoms these are black ones are dots okay these black dots are actually carbon okay the carbon atoms normally stay in the in the octahedral voids of the this so from by distorting this fcc unit cells or fcc uh, you know austenite we can actually generate the bct unit cell and this can happens by application of cf force you do not require any other things so what do actually happens is that iron atoms in the lattice they uh, both iron and carbon by carbon atom undergoes larger distortion they get shuffled because of the distortion. So if you have a series of this suppose series of these uh, the unit cells are present from one this end to this end a large number of unit cells present each of these unit cell gets just rotated okay, from FCC orientation to BCT orientation and this orientation change is very very fast this can happen at the speed of sound as I told you in the last class. The speed of the sound inside a normal iron is uh, normal uh, you know metal is very high. So that is why the frequency at which it happens is very fast and this is the reason if you quench in water immediately this FCC austenitic phase transform into martensites. As you know at the bottom I show you the lattice parameters of this BCT unit cell see the C axis is A0 and uh, both A and B axis are A0 by root 2 A0 by root 2 from the original where A0 is the original lattice parameter of the FCC austenitic phase. And uh, you can actually uh, think about like this you can draw this as a sink cover like this this is what is this uh, the unit cell. So in this whole process what happened the C axis gets compressed by about 20 percent one other and A uh, the, or the X and Y axis in which the two A are written uh, they are getting they undergo tensile deformation about 20 percent 12 percentage that is what actually happens. But you know in the whole process uh, there is uh, okay before I go there the whole process what actually happens in the uh, if you if I, I have drawn it last class I am going to draw it here again to show you that uh, these are the two austenitic unit cells suppose and uh, okay so and this is the uh, this is the plane which is undistorted and um, remains like this. So I am just showing exaggerated distortion this is the plane which remain on this, so this is alpha prime or martensite. side these are the gamma. So this is in a nutshell these two uh, austenite planes just like that I have shown you in the picture on the top here this plane of uh, martensite remains undistorted this is known as habit plane. Why it remains undistorted is still not clear but it remains undistorted and uh, und un undistorted unrotated and to keep it undistorted distorted unrotated you need to disturb or you need to distort the other parts of these of these of these uh, you know austenites uh, or the both sides of these plane because you need to have you need to keep this undistorted thing remember this is a lattice invariant transformations what i mean to say is that one of the there are two uh, strain here one strain is the plane strain uh, in which the transformation happens from fcc to bct that's what i discussed at the beginning the rotation of these unit cells uh, from the B FCC orientation to the BCT orientation happens by this plane strain mechanism. On the other hand in order to uh, you know in order there is another strain which is required to keep the habit plane um, between the two austenite, austenite grains undistorted. You may ask why do you need a habit plane? 
well in all matter state transformations this is has been observed this is a real observation experimentally that one of the planes in the matter side remain undistorted and that plane is always uh, considered to be habit plane. So, to keep this undistorted habit plane you need to disturb or you need to distort the remaining uh, neighboring grains and neighboring unit cells and this is normally done by twinning or slip and that is why we observe twins inside the martensitic uh, plates that is very very common. Okay, so, uh, that is also very important and I should reiterate. So, this is very important you have to understand that. So, now uh, let me just show you the few uh, things. Okay, let us first uh, see so how different morphologies do develop. Okay, now you know uh, this is what is these uh, plates which you see here very nicely sorry then these are the laths okay, you see here nicely. Uh, what you see here is that within the austenite grains the martensite or alpha prime this laths originates they form from one, one end and grow and reach the other ends. So, each, each of these grains you see the martensitic plates uh, last forms and that is why the second microstructure develop and this is what is shown here this is what is shown there in the C picture C. Then we can also have plates that is what is shown here these are the plates morphology which I have shown you earlier also. So, these are the two morphology which is normally seen. Now actually this plate and mixed morphology depends on carbon concentration. So, if I plot a mass versus carbon concentration weight percent of carbon okay, that is uh, the normally that is the normally the uh, way things are done. So, uh, and this you can see nicely here that the so if I draw that you increase the carbon concentration matrix transformation start temperature decreases which I told you in last class. So, normally low carbon concentration you see lath and high carbon concentration you see plates and in between you see mixed morphology this low is about 0.2 and this is about say 0 0.7 or 0 0.8 that is how the things happen. So, that means what as the martensite task the start temperature decreases or drops there is a tendency of formation of these different morphologies. Okay. Okay, like now let me clarify that you know this uh, martensite transformations is athermal in nature I told you in the class last class why because if this transformation depends on the two temperatures martensite start temperature martensite end temperature. Uh, when we will discuss about the TTT curves we will show how these temperatures will depend on and what are the ways we can actually generate TTT diagrams. So, martensitic start temperature is the temperature below which the martensite can start forming whereas martensitic finished temperature is what is the temperature at which martensitic formation is finished or over. So, in between this temperature you need to cool the sample rapidly then all the transformation happens. But you know once you cool the temperature uh, the, the steel suppose this is the MS temperature uh, start temperature this is the MF temperature or finished temperature and these temperatures are very close to room temperatures maybe 100 or sometime even less than room temperature. So, if I quench the steel till this temperature now the transformation of martensite will not depend on time anymore as obvious because martensite transformation is uh, happens at the speed of sound. So, therefore, it will happen immediately. So, uh, so, that is why it is called athermal it does not depend on time anymore it depends. So, if you at this temperature whatever amount of martensite is required to transform and transform and then it will remain the rest of the austenite will not transform. Then if you cool it further some more amount will transform if you cool it further some more and finally, it will be over at the MF temperature. So, whatever way you do because martensite transformation requires strain straining the matrix straining the austenite as you have seen the formation of twins formation of dislocations in the microstructure. So, these strain energies the whatever strain energy is present in the microstructure ok this is what I show you in the last class are these strain energies here you see the twins there you see the plates uh, there you see the dislocations this strain energy is going to uh, make the dis transformation of the remaining austenite more difficult that is obvious because strain energy is a positive energy. So, if you quench from the austenitic state to the very low temperature at room temperature like quenching in water you are going to give a huge diving force for the martensite transformations. But you know out of available diving force a majority part of the diving force is spent in straining the matrix or straining the creation of this deformation or creation of these twin dislocations. And because of that the more uh, large amount of this the, the, the available free energy is spent and as you create more and more deformations more amount of energy is required. So, finally, what will happen whatever initially energy I have for making the transformation to happen 
the finally as the deformation goes on the transformation the energy getting reduced that is why you finally retain some return austenite you cannot do any transformation in a steel scale what they do normally to transform the resistant austenite because return austenite is very dangerous uh, if it remain in the microstructure why it is dangerous because it will have all the tensile still built in inside the return austenite and because it will retain the tensile stress inside it the moment you apply the material it will crack that is what is observed even many matrix transformation transform steels. So, in order to reduce that uh, cracking tendency or return austenite must be removed from the microstructure. So, that is why industry many times they cool, cool it to the liquid nitrogen temperature. So, that all the return austenite transform all or 99 percent return austenite transform to martensite. There is no return austenite left over. This is one such thing like if you see this picture here the lot of return austenite is retained you know, as I am putting my pointer on that these, the, these kind of things are basically martensitic lats. But on the other hand, this uh, grey color, the, the uh, magenta color thing is basically martensite written austenite, and which is very, very predominantly observed in the microstructure, it is very, very unique in the, in the microstructure. So, it is important that we do not keep any written austenite in the microstructure, but you cannot avoid during the transformation process. That is what is uh, the, uh, the important aspect you must take away. The written austenite is not at all uh, required in the microstructure. So, now question is this. You know, when you transform this uh, uh, the martensites, as you see here, the I am showing you the martensitic lattice parameters. This is the lattice parameter of this is the lattice parameter function of carbon concentrations. This is the lattice parameter of the austenite. It doesn't change much as you increase carbon concentration because FCC lattice carbon can easily go into more and more, but in BCC lattice, it is sorry in BCT lattice cannot. So the change of lattice parameter from 3.55 to 3. 6 is what happens if you increase carbon constant 0 0.2 to 1.6 or 1.7, but martensites the A and C x is the behave differently. The A uh, the lattice parameter of A will decrease as a function of carbon concentration quite a lot from 2 point uh, you know 2.85 to about 2.8. On the other hand C axis undergoes a massive change from about 2.85 to about 3.8 as the carbon constant increases point point from 0 to about you know uh, 1.7. So, this is another important aspect. So, that means what as C axis is uh, keep on increasing as the carbon constant increases. Now, not only that the other elements also do have a strong effect on the martensite transformations. In fact, if you add alloying elements like in stainless steel if you add chromium, nickel the or uh, some other alloying elements like moly the martensite start temperature actually increases as you increase as you increase the amount of the alloying elements and that has been seen. So, the hardness increases as you keep on increasing the this alloying elements because this alloying elements imparts more solid solution strength into the martensites. Okay, now, martensite strength also depends on the carbon concentration. This is the hardness plot as a function of carbon content. You see here this is the martensite. Okay. This is the martensite for the plain carbon steel. I am just showing this is the martensite for the plain carbon steel. It is keep on increasing beyond point up to 0 0.6 or 0 0.8 then it remains saturated. So, that is what happens. So, that means more the amount of carbon more is the amount of strain amount of strain in the martensites. On the other hand we will discuss benite, benite this does not change much it remains this varies from 200 to 400 uh, VPN not much, but there it can go up to 900 or 1000 VPN very easily. Okay. So, uh, in the in the, uh, in the martensites as I told you martensites actually is what martensites are very uh, hard and very brittle I told you that. So, normally martensites are not directly used in the in the applications although martensite transformation is used for to generate different microstructure, but we do not use a component which is completely transformed into martensites okay. that is because it is very brittle and very hard hardness can be as high as Rockwell hardness it can be as high as 60. So, what is needed to reduce this brittleness is tempering of martensites tempering means you know to reduce the brittleness by some heat subsequent heat treatments. So, if you heat the martensites at high temperatures they undergo certain transformations because of that you can actually create a different kind of microstructures. So, in this uh, th th this transformations which I will discuss in the class uh, in, the, in, the, in the lecture in the next uh, few things in the next lecture, but before that let me just tell you few other things about martensites. As I told you in the class that martensite strength is depends on the carbon concentration. So, if I plot hardness I showed you that in the in the carbon in the uh, 
in the in the slides. So, as you see maternal strength increases is about 0 0.6 percent carbon 0 0.8 percent carbon and then it remains flat. Why does it happens? That is because if you put more and more carbon into the into the uh, into the BCT lattice it distort the lattice more and uh, and it reaches an optimum level about 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 percent carbon beyond which it cannot take any more carbon. So, whatever remaining carbon is there uh, if you add into the if, if you take a steel with 0 0.8 or 0 0.1 percent carbon steel this remaining carbon concentrations will not add up into strength of the modern sites. So, that is why you know normally martensite transformations are good for the, uh, the mild steels about 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 percent carbon steel. Martensite transformations will not change uh, strength of the steel much if you increase carbon concentrations from 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 or 0 0.1 percentage. So, that is another thing which, which you should uh, incorporate. Second important thing is that the martensites are as I told you they are very brittle and why they are brittle because it has a lot of strain inside it all the twins dislocations which are there the moment you apply force it cannot no longer deform plastically because it has already lot of strain inside the matrix inside it. So, that is why they cannot any more take up any more strain and because of that the strain the martensites will be uh, uh, brittle. So, but on the other hand there are martensites like in iron nickel or uh, you know there are some sepamary alloys the martensites is basically not a brittle it is a ductile. As I told you there are many non ferrous systems also when the martensites is uh, observed the same memory is one such system copper nickel aluminum copper manganese aluminum is where the, this martensite is also observed they are actually the martensites is ductile. So, which is a different reason why they are ductile and for that ductility of martensite can be used to give shapes in the same memory alloys this is done. So, logic what is used in steel cannot be directly used in the non ferrous metals. So, because this is brittle in the steel, so they are brittle in, in iron carbon alloys or steels iron carbon alloys. So, therefore, this needs to be uh, you know treated and that is what is we are going to discuss in the next class in the detail manner, but just I want to tell you the reason why it is brittle is because it has lot of strain inside it. So, that is a, that is the second uh, important aspect. Third important aspect is that you know martensitic transformations actually as I told you it is it's, it's very simple you take a steel and quench in water or liquid nitrogen or while you can transform into martensites, but there are situations where you can actually get both martensite transformations and the many transformation together the steels actually it is possible that you can you do not need to quench it to water at low temperature you can quench it to a while which is at kept at very high temperature like 300 or 400 or 300 or 250 degrees Celsius temperature. So, as you quench from, uh, from very high temperature to 350, 300 or 250 Celsius temperature initially some amount of austenite will transform to martensite, but then whatever austenite will remain that will transform into bainite which we will discuss in the subsequent lectures. So, this is sometimes known as mart tempering, so not same as tempering. So, mart tempering is martensitic formation and benetic transformations. So, martensite plus benite. So, you can actually tell like take a steel sample this is temperature this is time. So, you can rapidly cool up to 250 degree Celsius temperature this is 250 this is 950 rapidly cool and keep it there. So, because of rapid cooling here martensite forms and then in this part you will have benetic transformations possible because you keep it at high temperature. So, you have a microstructure which so this is also known as uh, this is also uh, you know very important tool nowadays to create different kind of microstructures. So, that is all for the uh, for the formation of martensites in the next class I am going to discuss about the uh, basic uh, the, the, the tempering of martensites in detail manner and we all if I time permits I can start even the benedict transformations there.